By 1989, the hit series The Addams Family's Run had been over for 23 years, but it was still relevant enough to warrant the license of a video game, and there's plenty of material to work with with the eccentric lifestyle of the Addamses. Sunsoft decided to make Uncle Fester the main focus and lead character, titling this NES game Fester's Quest. This quest is a rescue mission to save the town from an alien invasion, particularly Gomez who has been kidnapped by the invaders. You get a cutscene in the beginning of Uncle Fester relaxing in his backyard when a UFO shows up and starts their attack. The look on Fester's face here is hilarious. So he grabs his trusty blunderbuss and heads out to take the aliens down. It's an overhead shooter. Most of the game takes place in the city or in the underground sewers that lead you to other parts of the city that you otherwise can't get to. You'll enter a series of brown houses. Each one contains a character from the show that provide you with an item. All the main characters from the Addams Family make an appearance, including three of them by thing. Aside from the items you'll get from your family, you'll also find some off the street, usually after killing enemies, or these globs that I'm assuming are alien cocoons. There's light bulbs that will light up the dark sewer portion, which is very necessary. Trying to get through this shit in the dark is, well, as you'd imagine, it's much more difficult. Money will buy hot dogs to replenish your health, keys will open up the doors to each of the buildings, they're all locked and the upgrade and downgrades for both the gun and whip respectively. The blue gun icons will upgrade your gun while the red ones will downgrade it. Same goes for the whip, although it won't matter early on because you don't start with the whip, you'll acquire it later on. The brown houses aren't the only buildings you'll enter either. There's also these white buildings that'll take you into a 3D maze where you'll have to find the back door to advance further into the game. Man, the architect behind the design of this building was on some serious crack. What the fuck is up with this? It was actually pretty cool during the NES era where there wasn't a whole lot of 3D elements like this, although the redundant walls will make it pretty easy to question whether or not you've explored the whole place yet, which is what you want to do to find another bar of health in a certain building, and when you reach a door you may end up wondering if this is the door that you already came in or not. Exiting the way you came in will force you to use a key to get back in, which is kind of lame, but keys aren't that hard to come by so no big whoop. There is a big whoop however with the difficulty. It's not so much that you get raped by enemies all the time, but they take a lot of hits sometimes. And they respawn a lot, which sucks because you'll often have to retreat to get enough distance to get off the thousands of bullets it takes to kill them. Worse yet, you only get two bars of health, one life only, and basically no continues. Sure, you can buy hot dogs to replenish your health, and use healing potions later on to do the same, but there are only six hot dog stands in the whole game, and you can only carry five potions, which you acquire in one particular spot. It wouldn't be so bad if you could take more hits, or at least have a few lives. There technically are continues, but the only things that continue is your inventory, your gun and whip levels, and your life bar. You always start at the very beginning, no matter how far you've gotten. It's a pretty harsh punishment. I think at the very least it should start you back at the spot right after you defeated the last boss. Speaking of which, the bosses. Yeah, they're the biggest pains in the ass. Most of them have a pretty steep learning curve, which makes it really annoying to take only a few hits and go all the way back to the beginning. You'll probably learn not much of anything from his attack pattern the first time you fight him, and you'll have to go all the way back through the slow, droney game before finally making it to him again. And then by the time you do figure out the attack pattern, you'll almost certainly lose the rhythm of the fight by the time you make it back. This is why you should have a certain number of continues, and be allowed to continue right at the spot of the boss. The bosses themselves are actually well designed and pretty badass, but there's not a lot of variety. Each time you defeat a boss, you'll get a puzzle piece to a clue, which right off the bat is obviously the UFO you spotted earlier. The graphics, animation, and controls are all decent, but the gameplay suffers from a loathsome pace, irritating difficulty, and overall flawed combat. So you'll start out in the middle of the street, shoot these alien cocoons or whatever they are, and grab everything they leave except the gun downgrades obviously. Keep walking up and down this area, respawning all the cocoons when you leave the screen originally. Keep this up until you level your gun all the way up to the max level of 8, and at the same time you'll probably have a shitload of light bulbs, cash, and keys. You'll meet the most frequent enemy of the game, the mutated frogs who have different variations based on the color. 
Blue ones are the easiest to kill and have no special attack. They just hop around. The orange ones take a bit more hits than the blue guys, but they also have no special attack. The green ones take a lot more hits than both the orange and blue, and they'll hit you with a deadly tongue thrust after they stop, so watch out for that. Finally, there's the red ones which also take a shitload of hits, and they attack by spitting three fireballs in spread shot formation, which will not only drain energy, but it'll slow you down considerably, as if you weren't slow enough already. Head down, and if you take a right, you'll hit a dead end, so don't bother with that and go left. Head up here, cause if you continue left, you'll only hit a sewer that sends you about 4 feet to the other side, it's a complete waste of time, although there is a hot dog stand over here. There's also one up this way, but watch out for these floating bug nests, which look like faces. They'll do nothing on their own, but if you shoot it, you'll piss off a swarm of flies that live there, and if you get bit by one, you won't lose any health, but you'll get hit with the same lag as the fireballs from the red frogs. If you do accidentally hit the nest, keep your distance and shoot them down. They'll stay within the general vicinity of the nest. So hit the hot dog stand if you need to, and use the key on the house here to get some TNT from Pugsley. This shit is explosive, as if you really could figure that out. You can carry 30 at a time, and you won't get any more refills from this point on, so use it sparingly. I suggest waiting for the boss battles. Exit the house, shoot the blue guys, and head this way to the next house straight away to get vice grips from Wednesday. For whatever reason, using vice grips will disable the lag you'll get from the fireballs and flies. Then head back in front of the Pugsley house and go into the sewer by these stairs and use the light bulb to turn the lights on. You'll want to do this every time you go underground by the way. You'll find rats down here which scurry along the perimeter of the walls and not much else. Try to stay centered in the hallways and shoot them when they cross paths with you. Then there's the same bug nest faces you see outside, but these will move towards you, and by shooting them, which you'll pretty much have to do if you want to get past them in this narrow path, you'll summit these maggot-like creatures that'll turn into the same flies as the ones from above ground if you don't kill them quick enough. These green blobs will just float around slowly, but if you shoot them, they'll multiply, at least for a limited amount of occasions, so if you decide to shoot them, keep your distance and shoot frequently till you finally get rid of them. You can go around them, but they'll follow you, so you might as well kill them off. When you first get underground, bypass this right turn and keep moving. You'll otherwise hit a dead end. Kill the globs, and when you get to this fork, take the right path up. The left one will lead to a dead end also. This line of green frogs can be a pain in the ass, because you'll want to back up to keep away from them as they come down and shoot them. But then the same asshole could respawn, so try to get them out of the way as soon as you can to avoid an endless loop of green frogs. Just make sure you don't get too close to them in the process, or you get tagged with the tongue. Then continue on, shooting the blobs and frogs until you reach the ladder back outside. As soon as you get out here, you'll be greeted with red frogs, so head right if you need health and seek refuge behind these park benches. Buy hot dogs and head left into this area. Kill the blue frogs and get the health potions from the thing. Save these primarily for boss battles or in an emergency situation, as there'll be hot dog stands around otherwise. And five potions will be all you get throughout the game. Head back and continue up the street and head left. You'll find these mutated bugs that jump around when you shoot at them. They'll usually stay away from you once you attack them, so just keep shooting and they're not much of a problem. Use a key on this white building to enter the first 3D house of the game. Take the first left, and then the next left until you hit the wall and you'll get an added life bar. Exit either door in the building and head back to the hot dog stand to fill up your life meter completely. Then head back to the white building and head right, blast the frogs in the way, and continue left here and you'll get to another brown house with thing in it, it gives you invisible potions. These potions don't make you invisible at all, they make you invincible. Someone fucked that one up. Now head back and down the middle path you just bypassed which leads underground. It's a linear path of frogs, rats, globs, and these red chompers that sneak through the walls. Turn and be ready to shoot when you see them approaching nearby walls from the other side. When you get out, you'll hit another white 3D building. Head all the way to the end of the hall, take a left, keep going till you get to a T intersection, and take a right. You'll get to the back door which leads to the first boss, this alien that makes long strikes with its appendages. He'll attack with one arm at a time, three times, and then attack with both at once on the fourth shot, which is his cue to shift over. Your best bet is to stay directly in front of him so both of his arms will end up on either side of you. Keep repositioning yourself each time he moves, but don't bother if he gets all the way to the right against the wall. The screen will cut you off from getting into a safe position. Keep this up until he's dead. He'll exit the back of the building and won't be able to re-enter. This happens after every boss battle, preventing you from backtracking and restocking on items you might need, particularly potions. 
So slip down the stairs, follow the linear path, and shoot down all the maggot nests, blobs, and frogs. When you come back up, head down the street only if you need health and you don't want to use a potion. Because there's a hot dog stand at the bottom of the street. But there are a shitload of red and green frogs that don't seem to have an end in sight. So take that into consideration. Also guarding the hot dogs is this giant spider-like creature. Don't get too close to him because he'll pretty much rape you. If you keep your distance and just blast him, he won't be a problem. Did I really just say that this giant spider was guarding the hot dogs? Only in the world of Nintendo or LSD could you say something like that. So whether or not you decide to take this route, head up the street and take a right between these trees. There'll be a couple frogs and maybe this red thing along the way. It'll lead you underground, another linear path with nothing new in it. Just some frogs, rats, and red chomper guys. You'll come out on this wooden bridge. Enter the brown house and Morticia gives you the whip. Then take the stairs down. You'll see this weird looking creature on the other side of the wall that shoots projectiles. But don't worry, he can't come through the wall and he'll disappear once you get to the other side anyway. All you'll have to contend with is a couple orange frogs. You'll come up, fight a few bugs, and then right back underground again, battling mostly blobs and a few red chompers. You may want to stay in this place and level up your whip, which will tear the shit out of these blobs. But if you want to level up, use the gun so you can get more goodies from them. Then you'll come up right in front of a white 3D building. Head down the hall, go straight past the four-way all the way up to the wall, and it'll lead you right to the door, and the second boss battle ensues. This Triceratops alien crossbreed will attack with two whips, alternating between the two. Walk back and forth to the opposite side of each attack, turn around and shoot or whip him, and quickly walk back to the other direction to avoid the whips. Once in a while, move downward to give yourself more room because each time you turn to face him, you'll have to move up a bit, which will eventually lead to you walking into him, and you don't want to do that. This boss isn't really that hard to get the hang of, but it does take a shitload of hits, just like every other boss, so don't get careless. After taking him out, go down the stairs, kill the globs and chompers, and skip the north path. It leads to a dead end. Just keep going straight and back up the stairs. Head into the brown house and get missiles from Thing. Then continue down the path of the pier. Grab hot dogs if you need them and head back down. There's nothing here at all. Just walk to the next set of stairs. You'll come up in front of another 3D maze building. Head all the way to the end of the hall and just keep following that path and you'll arrive at the boss. It uses its sword to summon up a spread shot of three projectiles. Worse yet, his shield will protect most of his body, but it will pull the shield away when attacking. So wait until he charges up the sword, where he'll freeze momentarily and head down and across a few steps so he'll miss and lay into him when he's attacking. Then move back up so he'll back away. If he gets close to the bottom, he'll corner you and you're fucked. If this becomes too much of a pain in the ass for you, use missiles or TNT. After defeating him, head down the stairs, defeat all the blobs in your way, go back up, and then go into this hole in the pier. Follow the linear path, blasting blobs, and come back out, and you'll come to another 3D building. Take the first left, follow the path to the corner, take your second right, and then the second left, and the door will lead you to the fourth boss. This bastard is a pain in the ass. Similar to the last boss, he has a shield and fires off a spread shot, but this guy will move around while attacking, so if you try to position yourself to avoid it, he'll just move over and nail you. You can use missiles, and I recommend it if this strategy here doesn't work. Give yourself some distance, walk to the right so your attacks will line up just to the right of his shield, turn, shoot, and quickly head left and get between his spread shot. He'll jump before shooting, so use that as a cue to start walking left. Thankfully he won't charge you and you'll be able to keep your distance without having to reposition him. Unfortunately he takes more hits to kill than the preceding bosses, which always increases with each boss that you fight. Eventually you'll take him out. Head down the next set of stairs and follow the path, killing all the frogs, chompers, and globs, oh my. You'll surface and fight off some hopping bugs, frogs, and a fly nest. There's also a hot dog stand along the way to recuperate. Head into the next brown house where Grandmama gives you some nooses. These will summon the butler lurch to appear and wipe out all the enemies on screen. You'll get 15 of these, but save them for the home stretch. Believe me, you're gonna need them. Move on, killing the frogs and chompers that pop up along the way, and take the secret path here to get to the family house and get an added bar of hell. Then head back underground. This room consists of mostly green and orange frogs, and some chompers, globs, and blue frogs here and there. It looks like there's a fork in the road here, but it leads to the same destination, so it doesn't really matter. 
Just make sure you head left and hug the perimeter to get to the stairs back out. Going right will just lead you to a dead end. Head back out, kill the long line of chompers, and follow the path to the stairs underground. Follow the path, killing the globs and orange frogs, and you'll be back outside again. You'll hit yet another 3D building. This one's pretty big. Take your first two lefts, then a right at the T intersection, then your next right, a left at the next T intersection, and a right at the next T, and you'll hit the door, which leads you to the fifth boss. This creature will spit out a fireball quickly, followed by a spread shot of three projectiles. Stay as far away as you can, shoot, and walk to the left or right, whichever has more space, right as he's spitting the fireball. And if you position yourself correctly, you should be able to get between the shots. Thankfully, this prick doesn't have a shield, like the last two, so it's much easier to connect. But it does take a long time to kill due to its insane amount of endurance. Your thumbs will fucking hurt after playing through this game. After you finally take this bastard down, kill the frogs that stand between you and the next staircase and head down. There's nothing here, just a clear path to the next staircase up. Walk along the line, killing the chompers in your way, and this gravesite will somehow lead you to the UFO spaceship. There are these eye ghosts that float up and down, and they increase in speed each time you shoot them, so you may want to just walk around them. You can only hit them when they're level with you horizontally, so don't bother with the whip. Just shoot continuously and at a distance if you want to kill them. Then there are these spiked globs, and I call them globs because they resemble the green globs in every way except that they have spikes on them. They multiply too, so use the whip on them unless you want to level up your gun or whip. These things will scurry along the walls, stop momentarily, and fire off three bubbles at you. Use the whip on the green center, but it will close up when it attacks, so once you see that, get away and maneuver your way between the attacks. Then there are these sons of bitches. They're very difficult to defeat without getting hit. They aggressively follow you, fire off three green projectiles, and on top of that, they take forever to kill. So if they trap you, the best bet is to fire off a noose. These green things are very similar, except they shoot a barrage of bubbles whenever you hit it. So try to avoid them, but if you get trapped, use the noose. Most of the spacecraft is a linear path with all the enemies I previously mentioned, until you get to this wide open area with a shitload of frogs and other monstrosities. Head to the lower left hand section of the room and head up this path. Quickly take the path downward while trying to avoid this green prick, and take the first right. Follow this path and soon after is the final boss, this huge ass machine with guns mounted in the center that fires straight ahead consistently, and this projectile that weaves around at different trajectories based on where your position is on the screen. This is the most difficult boss in the game by far, but it's also the easiest. What I mean by that is that there's a trick. First off, you have to take out one of the guns so you can hit the real target, which is in the center. Stand right here, and you won't be in the path of the gun, and the projectile will just sail around you. Just keep firing at the gun until it's destroyed. Then readjust your position so you're right here this time, and fire continuously. I know it seems like a cheap shortcut, but fuck. Even getting all these shots in rapidly takes a while. Just try to imagine battling this fucking thing while moving around and dodging everything. Fuck that. So after taking him down, the spaceship blows up and the people cheer Uncle Fester by pumping their fists in unison. So that was Fester's Quest, a fatally flawed shooter that had a pretty good concept, but a failed execution. If you want to play an Adam's Family game, there are definitely better choices from other consoles. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.